Hello once again and welcome back to Trails from Zero. Hey, I'm actually here this week. I didn't miss a week. That's because I'm recording it ahead of time. Hmm, gotta think ahead. And we're on the same build, so nothing's really changed. Let's continue touring around Crossbell City. This would be the Harbor District. Ah, the Harbor District. It's connected to the Lupinus River and Lake Elm just south of us. This area is home to many different businesses. If you look north, you'll see all sorts of companies lined up next to each other. Can't forget about that nice park in the middle though. This is just right for a bit of rocks and... But I could take a quick snooze there, easy. The database indicates this area is simply named the Harbor District. Not exactly a complex name, is it? Wait, is that? The Crossbell Times! I was wondering where they moved their office to. The city's gone through a lot of changes these past three years, huh? The Harbor District serves as the business district and is located in the northeastern part of the city. The park faces Crossbell's longest river, the Lupinus River. Citizens and tourists alike visit this scenic park for relaxation and fun. It's also home to some major businesses, such as the famed Crossbell News Service. Ah yes, the harbor. Hello, Bishop. Okay, the next destination is... Hey you, get out of the way. Yeah, Bishop just runs around making deliveries all day. Kuna. Some of these names are a little weird. I didn't decide them. She uh, tours around the park. Basically strolls around every day. What's up, Nicole? Huff Puff, he's jogging. I should probably work on my conditioning. What do you do, Nicole? I know what you do. I believe you're unnamed citizens? Tourist. Let's try over by the actual pier. Yeah, I love this guy. Old man Quinn. What do you want, you whippersnapper? Are you here to waste my time? Leave already, you're scaring the fish away. This dude's so grumpy, I love him. So over here's the Lupinus Lighthouse. I think it has a sign on it. Lupinus Lighthouse, an unauthorized entry is simply prohibited city hall. Look out, Lupinus River. I'm here to catch I'm going to catch some dinner. <laughs> I forgot I didn't expect this to work, but I forgot how it was a two game plus. So I already have a fishing rod on me. I'm not sure if that would be there or if Lloyd would say anything if I didn't. I can't remember. Crossbell City cruise ship schedule. The pride of Michel and Michel Wonderland is now open for all to enjoy. Come on down and experience the greatest amusement park of all time. Yeah, a, uh, a cruise ship shows up here that takes you to Michel. Now let's talk to my favorite NPC in the city, Ozell, who runs the noodle stand. Noodles must be firm, else I'll make you squirm. Your mind will be absolutely blown. Are you just going to stand there, or will you eat a bowl? My noodles are the mightiest in all the land, just one bite and you'll understand. I didn't write those lines, but I did write many of Ozell's lines. Yeah, Ozell's the greatest, please talk to him. So we got two other uh, doorways here. There's this location. A sign is affixed to the locked door. Highway Trading Limited, Crossbell Branch. If you have business with us, please knock and you can't get in. And over here is the Crossbell News Service, which is home to the Crossbell Times. Welcome to the Crossbell News Service. Are you here to lodge a complaint about one of our articles? Huh? No, I wasn't planning on it. Oh, really? Well, if you'd like to voice a comment for any of the stories we run, please let me know. I'll call the editor-in-chief for you. So, fun fact. Let's go into our saves and go to our auto-saves. Load this one. Tria here has a unique uh, comment, or rather there's a unique response, depending on who your party leader is. Hmm, no, not particularly. So yeah, they all have their own little thing. This doesn't happen too often, but it happens enough that whoever your party leader is could affect dialogue with NPCs. So when testing the game in our second wave of testers, 
we had to assign party leaders for them. We had to make sure someone did an Ellie run, a Tia run, and a Randy run. Because Atterbury and I really only had Lloyd as our leader the first time through. Huh? What's the matter with you guys? You trying to invade us or something? No, McKinnon. If you wanted to ambush our editorial department, then you're a hundred years too early, pals. Be it the Mafia or whoever you guys are, the Crossbow Times won't be taken down. Be sure to remember that, kids. Also, if you go behind Tria's desk, she has unique dialogue. Excuse me, people are hard at work here. Please go to the front of the desk if you have any inquiries. Thanks. And she also has a thing to say if you try to go to the editorial department. Yeah, for whatever reason, every other news service in Zemuria is very strict about letting you onto their second floor, unlike the liberal news service. I don't know why that is. Up this way, we have the International Bank of Crossbell. The IBC. This is the IBC's main headquarters, isn't it? It's an impressive building. Yes, this is indeed the IBC's main headquarters. Not only do they have many branches spread throughout all of Samaria, but their services extend beyond just banking. They had the most assets of any company 10 years ago, and it only continues to grow. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to call the IBC the cornerstone of Crossbell. Indeed, the IBC is an unfathomed force in the finance, construction, and real estate industries. Their latest ambition has been to fund a variety of massive public projects for Crossbell. Reports have shown them investing a fortune into the expansion of the Geofront and the Orbital Network. <sighs> Not the kind of place I'd normally associate with. Excuse me, Randy. You are aware that our salaries are transferred to us through the IBC, correct? Wait, are you kidding me? Considering they're within the city, it's pretty convenient for us. Although I think the bank's closed today. Well, that's because the employees don't have to work on the weekend, so let's come back some other time. That line's actually a little weird. Oh crap, hold on, give me a second. Okay, I should probably remember to turn off debug mode before I do this. That would have been embarrassing. Well, it would have been more embarrassing had we like fought monsters and the monsters not been able to touch me. Because I can turn that off with debug and I need it when testing sometimes. But that's now off. Good weather today, huh? Today's a corporate holiday for the IBC, so we're close. Right, the whole reason I opened the log. Uh, I think I'm gonna look into this later, because I feel like you do come to the IBC on weekends, though, like, the game doesn't do a good job of denoting, like, what day of the week it is. So, I don't know. I think it's just a holiday. They have corporate holidays from time to time. Yeah, like, Crossbell's really fuzzy when it comes to days of the week. Because usually, like, the best way to tell would be like, Oh, Sunday school is happening today. But this is where, like, the naming of Sunday school gets a hole poked in it. Because Crossbell's so large that it'd be ridiculous for every kid in the city to have Sunday school on Sunday. Like, obviously, it, has, it happens on different days of the week. I think there's even a conversation about that in Chapter 1. About how, like, certain neighborhoods have it on certain days and not really on Sunday. Ah uh, yes, the best district in Crossbell. It's East Street. Wowza, talk about an exotic looking street, huh? I believe this style is referred to as Eastern inspired. I have some knowledge of the area, but it pales in comparison to seeing it in person. I haven't had the chance to properly look at all of the stalls at the marketplace, to be honest. Yeah, why don't we check it out then? This is the part where I remind everybody that we aren't here to shop. Besides, I think the Bracer Guild is located somewhere around here. East Street is an Eastern-inspired district on the east side of Crossbell City. Who'd have thunk it? The marketplace is filled with street vendors and is popular among shoppers. Additionally, the Crossbell branch of the Bracer Guild is located in the area and provides support to the citizenry. East Street's the greatest... What's your name? You just walk all up and down the street. Renault! Oh, I don't recognize you kids. Is this your first time coming to East Street? Lots of merchants and immigrants around here, if you were curious. Foreigners have been welcomed with open arms for as long as I can remember. This is Roy and Mei Ling. My mom and dad keep making me babysit Mei Ling. Holy heck, I wish they'd leave me alone. Listen up, Mei Ling. 
Your brother wants to be a lazy nobody today. Feel free to stick around, but you gotta be quiet, okay? Okay. See, this guy's name is, I don't remember, Kronk, right. Kronk's uh, gimmick is that he runs the shop. He sells like a, a few like weird, unique things. I think he's like the only person in the city that sells battle scopes. He also has pinwheels. His gimmick is that uh, he injures himself a lot. He like cuts himself moving stuff around his shop or whatever. So yeah, you can get a few accessories from him as well as smoke grenades and battle scopes. Battle scope's super handy if you're looking to completely fill out the monster notebook. Oh, welcome. Our veggies are extra fresh today, so I hope you'll buy some. This is Din's. He uh, runs Din's Fresh, another place to buy ingredients. Welcome, folks. Oh, haven't seen your faces around these parts. How about I throw you guys a little extra for free? Not really. NPCs say that sometimes. Like, there's a line where Oscar's like, yo, Take a, take a loaf of bread, Lloyd, but you don't actually get bread? I thought that was weird. Man, this dude must have gone through a lot of trouble to get all these veggies on display like this. I feel like it'd almost be rude to not buy something. Oh, I guess I should buy something then. Let's see, what do I have particularly low of? Let's get a fresh herb. Hmm, fresh herb. Susan here, she uh, comes here to shop at the marketplace. She's always complaining about her family. I think she has like a bunch of boys and a husband. So she's always complaining about the men in her house. Mart here uh, sells fish. Well, actually she doesn't sell fish. She sells fish in universe, but not actually to you. You can't buy fish off of her. In fact, it's the opposite. As you can see, she actually lets you give her fish in exchange for Sep. It's not that useful to be honest. Like, unless you really need Sepith on your first playthrough, then it's useful. Uh, you're a tourist. Yeah, you're, like, this is the only time you ever stand here. There's another person. There should be a woman that roams here. Here we go. N. No, we're not tourists. I'm sorry. You can always rely on the bracers. We'll go in there in a minute. Uh, let's check this thing out. There's an Eastern-looking Jizo. Huh, I knew Eastry was, well, Eastern. I can't say I was expecting them to actually be worshipping a big Jizo statue. This is my first time encountering one. It has an enormous face. <laughs> Literal. What is the purpose of this counter? I'd imagine it's used for offerings. We can try offering any exceptional dishes we make here. Yeah, I guess we do cook for ourselves often. If we cook any especially delicious dishes... Who wrote that? Probably Arvin. Let's give this whole offering thing a try. So, uh, I, I remember testing this recently, and, uh, I think the dialogue is not dependent on anything, and I thought that was weird, that, uh, Lloyd will say that they cook for themselves often, whether or not, uh, one, it's the start of the game, it's the prologue, or B, whether or not you even have the recipe notebook. thought that was a bit off. But yes, this is where you can offer all of your, uh, I believe they're called Supreme Dishes? They have a unique name in the Crossbell arc. How do I... What's my buttons again? There we go. Not Detective. We want... Actually, yes. Detective. We want Lists. And if we go down into... Yeah, if you'll notice, all this stuff has been localized. Uh, this isn't text, by the way. These are all images. So this is all Photoshop work. Not here. Help Manual. Aha! Here it is. So, uh, up here you have your explanation for how dishes are made. Uh, and in the recipe notebook there are like extra pages that tell you how well someone might do. So you pick a partner to cook in this game. And everyone has like their own strengths with certain dishes. And here, let's see, these three dots here respond to or correspond with these three possible outcomes for the thing you're making. The middle one is the regular dish, what the recipe actually calls for, a happy ham sandwich. But the top ones and bottom ones are different. Supreme dish is when you do really well. A peculiar dish means it's kind of strange, not necessarily bad, but is like an unexpected result. You can get bad things though, you can have failures. Typically it results in like cat food that you can give to Cope. Can't remember what Cope gives you for cat food, but it's not as good as like rare quartz. So I only have so many of these. Yeah, we'll worry about this later. Uh, for every supreme dish, or if you give every supreme dish to the Jizo, you'll be rewarded. You'll get a rare quartz after all of it. Let's go into this house. 
Uh, actually, let's start up top and talk to you, Old Man Morris. Oh, you're that lad that we sat with on the train, right? It's the guy from the very start of the game. How was your first day of work? Thank you for asking. I feel like I'm really starting to get the hang of it. Ho ho, are these your colleagues? It's nice to see a group of young people working together towards a better tomorrow. Well, there's not much I can do, but feel free to drop by and talk to me if you ever need it. Back in my day, I was a merchant, as you'd imagine. I have a fair number of connections. Oh wow, I never knew that. Who are you acquainted with exactly? Hmm, let me think. There's the mayor of Crossbell, and there's a certain association of merchants. On top of that, a good friend of mine is also the director of St. Ursula Medical College. Uh, Lloyd, isn't this guy kind of a big deal? Um, uh, sir, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'm the sitting chairman of Crossbell's Business Owners Association. Oh, don't go getting all nervous now. It's not that big of a deal, honestly. His appearance does not play the part, though. So this is Chairman Moores of the Business Owners Association. And his wife, Parla. Oh dear, we meet again. If I recall correctly, we sat across from each other on the train. Oh, you're that kind lady from back then. That's right, you said your house was on East Street. This must be it then. I remember how you offered to carry our luggage for us. You're an admirable man for your age. Oh, by the way, my husband is upstairs if you'd like to talk with him. I already did. I'd be happy to. Yep, already did that. So yeah, Moores runs the Business Owners Association. And next door, we have... Do we get a cutscene? No, we don't. Peter, you know I can hardly refuse when it comes to showing off my master techniques. <laughs> How about we hold ourselves a tournament near the stream then? Who are these people? <laughs> Fishing by the streams up on Maine's Mountain Path, huh? I'm super excited just thinking about it. I think they're busy discussing fishing with each other. <laughs> this is the Fisherman's Guild Crossbell Branch. What's up, Copen? Why do I always get stuck cleaning the fish tank? Uh, this is so lame. What a drag. That's one massive fish tank. What the heck is this place? There's also a recipe on this shelf, but I already have it. Yeah, we can come back here later. We'll be, uh, we won't be coming here too often because I've already completed the fishing notebook. But it's time to head into the Bracer Guild. So this building belongs to the Bracer Guild. Indeed, they are an international non-government organization serving to keep the peace and protect civilians. In other words, they're the continent's favorite allies of justice. And our competitors. Now I suppose we should technically be collaborating with them. Oh my! Welcome to the Bracer Guild! Are you those SSS folks I've been hearing about all over? What? May I ask how you know of us? Regardless, nice to meet you sir. I'm Lloyd Bannings with the CBD Special Support Section. Could I ask you for your name as well, please? Sure, I'm Michelle. I serve as the receptionist for the Bracer Guild out here in Crossbell. I heard about you guys from Arios. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Still, I was surprised to see you recognize us immediately upon entry. Heh, <laughs> I figured it out by them badges pinned to your chest. Your faces scream, freeze. Hey, so I figured our mission statements are pretty similar, right? Uh, yeah, I cannot deny that. I'm guessing you guys aren't too amused by the situation, huh? How oh, silly you. We totally don't mind at all. In fact, we welcome you with open arms. We're always drowning in requests, and the Bracers already have their hands tied down. You'd be doing us a huge favor by taking on some of these requests, you know? I see. It's a bit of a relief to hear that. Don't get ahead of yourselves, though. You haven't done squat to prove yourselves as reliable allies. Yet. Ouch. Not pulling any punches, are we? I know I'm being a tad too harsh, but we seriously have some of the best bracers Samaria has to offer. It's not just Arios either. All of our other members are damn skilled and are respected by the citizens. I get they established the SSS to help regain public trust with the CPD, 
but all of its members are total newbies. Whether you're competent or not remains to be seen, right? Well, would you put it that way? They're so arguing that. Bit of a hard ass, don't you think? <laughs> I'll relax with the bullying now. Y'all should just do what you can and keep working at improving. Don't be afraid to fall and scrape your knees, because we got your backs. Thanks. We'll do everything we can to make your lives easier. Seriously, though, the special support section? Is it actually true your division was created due to some internal drama at the CPD? You've, uh, certainly got your sources locked down tight. Well, duh. Don't you go looking down on the power of our connections. We got our hands on all sorts of delicious information from all over the continent. For example, we could investigate the whole lot of fine gentlemen they have in Arabonia if you catch my drift. I get that they're informed and all that, but was that really the best example to try and flex on us with? <laughs> flex on us with- oh, that's an Arvin, I forgot about that. Anyway, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of each other in the future. Know that you'll always be welcome. Actually, come by again a little later if you're free. I've got a lovely idea. It can mark the advent of our collaboration, even. An idea? What exactly did you have in mind? Just a little something that'll give me an idea of how competent you really are. Mm-hmm, <laughs> don't worry. It ain't gonna bite you. Kinda suspicious, don't you think? On that note, why the flamboyancy? That's just the way Michelle is. And up here, we have... A couple of bracers. For one, we have my spirit animal, Bracer Scott from the Crossbell Branch, who's my YouTube icon. That artwork is from Akatsuki no Giseki. Man, Arios is out on another business trip. Guy can't seem to catch a break. Who am I to talk, though? We're about to get dispatched ourselves. Lynn and Aeolia should be back soon. Michelle sure loves working us to the bone, eh? Huh? The man's a slave driver. I'm surprised he doesn't brandish a whip. Pardon us. Are you all bracers? Oh, I recognize you guys. You're those officers from the SSS, yeah? You are correct. Figured it out in an instant, huh? Yeah, because you guys are brimming with immaturity. Do a bunch of guys as inexperienced as yourselves really plan on working in Crossbell? It's frustrating to hear insults, but I can't deny his reservations. Regardless of how you feel about us, we intend on doing what we can. How naive. Do you seriously think you'd ever grow if you never pushed beyond your limits? Ugh. Wow, he's harsh. <laughs> well, despite our onslaught just now, I'll be personally cheering for you guys. If the police showed a bit more competency, we wouldn't be working so damn hard all the time. You actually give us even more work by making us clean up after you. S sorry We'll work on fixing that. I got a couple of requests to handle out in Armorca Village this morning. Today is going to be a long day, so I better get going. We had some promising rookies join our ranks recently. I better try my hardest to remember that they're part of the guild now. So, fun fact, uh, because I don't know if we'll get a chance to see this anywhere else, depending on how many times I talk to NPCs, uh, Scott, Bracer Scott, is actually engaged to... Harla, I think her name is, the other receptionist at Times Department Store. If I can get in there. This one. Pearl. Pearl. Pearl is the girl outside. He's engaged to Pearl. Whoops. Let's head back. Actually, there's one last thing you want to check at the Bracer Guild. You can also check in on, on where all the bracers are at any given time. So you see that Arios is in Arabonia right now, actually. Scott and Winslow are upstairs, and Lynn and Aeolia, who we haven't met yet, are on patrol somewhere in the state. And let's see, one last place to visit on East Street? That would be here, at Long Loud Tavern and Inn. Let's check if anyone's in the inn part. These rooms are usually empty, but every now and then you might find like a tourist in them. Yeah, this place is eastern as hell. Like, you remember how, like, a few times in the liberal arc, I kind of brought up that, like, the east part of Zemuria and certain parts of Calvert are, like, really, like, vaguely Chinese? Boy, this game is going to kick that up several notches. What's up, Finn? 
Welcome to the best combination bar in and inn in town. Don't you think the landscape around here is kind of a mess? Back when Crossbell was Calvardian territory, a bunch of immigrants came here. After mixing in with all the other immigrants, everybody's nationality is a total mystery. This sort of melting pot environment has its upsides too, I guess. Although you are actually Calvardian, Finn. I know that for a fact. You guys tourists or locals? Well, either way, want to take a seat? Hello, Shan Shan. Oh, what a cute customer. Will you be dining in or are you renting a room? We have spots open for either. Place your order when you're ready, okay? Shan Shan's so cute. I love Grid here. Grid's a delivery man. He uh, takes his delivery truck daily to Calvert. And he pretty much does this all the time. It's weird. He does daily deliveries and yet he's always here. This is Puck and Roos. Puck and Roos are kind of like Diet Anton and Ricky, to be honest. They're always here at Long Lao, and they're trying to decide to like uh, start up a business together, but like all they ever do is procrastinate about it. So come check them out every now and then. They'll always be goofing around. Uh, let's talk to Zhang Wei, the owner. You are aware this is the kitchen, yes? You're not allowed back here. If you need to order, do it at the counter. I love Zhang Wei, he's great. If you have working eyes, you could tell this is the kitchen. Go order at the counter. He's also Shan Shan's father, and he's very protective of her. It's that girl again. Isn't there any place around here that has cheap rent? City Hall told me to look in this area, but I haven't found anything. Well, that's because you're in the wrong neighborhood. Didn't the receptionist tell you to go to the downtown district? Speaking of which, let's go to the downtown district. Downtown gets its own unique theme. It's also not downtown as we know it like in America. It's not the middle of the city. It's like a neighborhood that's off to the side. It's a slum that's like sort of disconnected from the city. Like for God's sake, you got you get here by traveling along a chain link bridge. This place sucks. Tan, there's a neighborhood down here? This place really a part of Crossbell City? Yes, it is. This is the downtown district. Yeah, I haven't really visited these parts either. This place is supposedly the remnants of a development project from long ago. According to the records, many citizens still inhabit the area. Interesting. I didn't know that. At any rate, this place is still within our jurisdiction. Let's do a quick sweep of the area. Downtown district is a rundown area found at the city's outskirts. While home to some useful facilities, they are unavailable in the early year stages of the game. Be sure to check back every once in a while as they as the story progresses. Yeah, screw you. You don't get to use those places yet. This is Vaughn and... What's the girl's name? Ruse, I think? Yeah, Ruse. Vaughn's great. These two kids are crazy. They, like, run around here half the time. This is Paola old lady who sits on this bench every day. Let's go to Lotus Heights. The apartment's here. This is old man... I can't remember. I think it's with a T? Tontos. There we go. Oh, we sure do have a fine day on our hands. An old man could get used to this. I love how fresh the air near the Lupinus River feels. It's really quite pleasant. This guy, whose name I also can't remember. Geithner. He, uh, he's like a washed up former stock trader or something. No, I think he's just like a regular merchant. He used to own a business and then he went broke. Now he lives here. Michaud, I remember you. His thing is that he's always studying every day. And, uh, he's trying to get into St. Ursula Medical College. So he's kind of like Baggio at Times Department Store. See, this apartment should be locked. Corona here lives in this apartment over here, and this is Lima, her daughter. She's a huge daddy's girl. She's always wondering where her dad is. He works in construction, so he's like almost never around. I think he's building the new city hall building. And here we have perhaps the best NPC in the game, maybe. So everyone kind of has like their own NPCs among the writing team. Uh, Certain, who's the branch manager of the Fisherman's Guild, that's an Arvin character. Arvin's responsible for 
Well, he's responsible for most of the city, but that's like really his pride and joy is that character. I wrote Ozell like a couple months ago. I rewrote all of his stuff. Ozell's great. And this guy's a Zerk byproduct. This is Doorman. He's just a door. He's man's voice behind a door. And he's drunk every day. He's also Vaughn's father. Glug, 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 glug. Booze. I need more. Give me more or I'll go but jerk, I swear. Please come see Doorman every phase. I also love that when we were testing the game and we were like making fun of his lines, we started posting screenshots of him. Zerk had like a huge fit where he goes, holy shit, I didn't know he was just a door. Because <laughs> on the spreadsheet, everything looks the same. But it turns out he's just a door. Fun fact, if you debug, you can also clip into that room. He is super just a door. He doesn't exist. He's just a door. There's nothing in the room. Cannon here is an interesting NPC. His gimmick is that he roams this one corner of the downtown district and is really proud of how clean he keeps it. He picks up trash every day. Let's head into... Oh, actually, you know what? Give me one second. I think there's something I need to do. All right, we're good. So truth be told, uh, last between last video and this one, I accidentally didn't back up my saves correctly. So I lost that hour of progress. So I had to replay like something. It's not, it didn't take long, obviously. It's just rushing through some NPC dialogue. But uh, I think I had to make sure I spoke to Wendy a second time in order to get the unique dialogue here. Oh, you folks customers? I've already used up all of my spare parts for the day. Sorry about that. Come back another time if you need anything. Hey, um, this is a factory, right? She's on her little, like, orbital. I think... Oh, that's right. We missed uh, some dialogue because it doesn't play in New Game Plus. But Tio has, like, equipment on her. You see, she has, like, her little cat ears. It's really a headband that goes along with her big chest piece that she's wearing. And it's not really, like, perfectly explained, but she has, like, some sort of, like, portable little way of checking in on the orbital net. It's really basic, though. I think it just, like, checks in some stuff that's, like, on the police database. But every now and then, there will be things like this where you hear something and then Tio, like, does a little clicking and quacking to check in on it. We'll uh, hear more about the computer system that she has, like, built in on her uh, a little later, I think. I don't think it's been perfectly named yet. It's called the Aeon system. There are no records of this business in the database either. He must not be in possession of a permit. <laughs> a smart lass you are. You'd be correct as I've yet to submit an application. <laughs> this isn't an official shop. I'm just running it for my own personal pleasure. I'd like to use it to repair broken orbital devices. It is essentially a repair shop then. Huh. Figures you can count on Crossbell to find anything you'd ever need. If I may respectfully comment, sir, it would be in your best interest to apply for a business permit. <laughs> you may be right, Missy. Anyway, I figure it's about time I close up shop. If you folks ever need help, you know where to find me. It'll barely cost you anything for some trivial repairs. I can fix a broken orbital light for dirt cheap. Try again. I used to work at the factory out in the city, you know? I guess they converted it into an orbital store for whatever reason as of last year. That line's a little weird. So I figured, hey, what the hell? Why not open up my own shop? Oh, so you're the craftsman Wendy was telling me about. Oh, you know that young lass Wendy? Oh, I get it. You're that childhood friend she always goes on about. She'd always go on about, whoops. The police officer, yeah? Sounds like Wendy's been telling you a lot about me, huh? Oh yeah, Wendy was my apprentice back when Jenten was still a factory. Huh. Glad to hear she's still doing well. And that's it. That's your unique dialogue for having gotten that. But yes, Guillaume here runs a factory. He, uh, I can't remember if he does slot stuff. I don't think he does. He's for, uh, weapon upgrades, actually. If you get, uh, U materials, you can bring them to Guillaume and upgrade your weapons. Nine Volley. Temporary, temporarily closed for the day. That's a little, like, not perfectly centered. I could probably add, like, a space in front of Nine Volley to make it a little better. And if you come this way, secret stairway to treasure chests. Power pumps. No wonder no one trusts the police these days. They're out here stealing from us treasure chests. So, uh, here's the thing. I'm gonna be real with you guys. So, if you follow me on Twitter, you might know. 
I'm the one. I'm responsible for picking all of the chess message submissions. So I had to read 1900 of these things and there's only... I think there's like 230 chests in the game proper. Proper 230. It goes up to I think 249. If you count chests that aren't supposed to exist. What do I mean by that? There's certain chests that are in locations that you're not supposed to be able to reach. So for example, we were, we've already been on a, like the nighttime map. We saw Central Square at night. There exists nighttime versions of the entire city, basically. There's uh, nighttime versions of every district. So for example, there's a nighttime version of this very chest, but you can never free roam the downtown district at night. So it's a blind chest. It doesn't actually exist. There's no way you could normally get to it, open it or read like what the message would be unless you're very crafty. So in the event that once the final version of the game is out, in the event some very smart people figure out how to find these blind treasure chests, the ones that shouldn't exist, they do in fact have unique messages. I wrote unique messages for all of them in case anyone ever reads them. So again, there should be about 20 in the game, 19, I think. That's a rough estimate. So, uh, the other chess messages, the, the ones that were a combination of submissions as well as ones that the Geofront wrote themselves, uh, I obviously had to read through 1900 of these things and boy, did that start killing my brain cells after a while because a lot of things got rejected for either not being very good, uh, being controversial. Some of them were like inflammatory, like we're not going to take jokes about like localization companies, for example or just dumb bullshit shit posts. Uh, a lot were rejected because they were repetitive. And this joke, for example, guess how many people wrote chess messages about police stealing from treasure chests? Like a few hundred. That might be an exaggeration. It might be like, I don't know, 100, 150. The point is there's a lot. So there are some in the game. There's like, I don't know, maybe five to 10 different variations of the joke. But like, obviously I can't put that many in. You'll get a handful and then the rest had to be rejected. Sorry. But this is one of them. I think there are a couple on the West Crossbell Highway. There might be one on Ursula Road. I can't remember. How the hell do you expect us to turn a blind eye to something like this? Well, I guess I can't ignore Wazi's orders either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. He won't let me into the bar. That's Trinity, by the way. It's not time to go to Trinity yet. There's also another place over here. There are two places, actually. There's this apartment building. Mason Imelda, currently unmanaged. Everything's covered in dust. Doesn't look like anybody's lived here for a while. I could probably make that three lines and set it two. It's a little oddly shaped as it is. And then there are these guys. Yeah, I feel you. We gotta give those guys a pummeling they'll never forget. As if I even give a damn. Ha ha ha. Oh, what are you looking at? You got a problem with me or something? Get the hell out of here. These guys in track suits. Huey slash. Weird that you don't get a name. Why don't you get a name? You have a name. I know what your name is, but why don't they give it to you yet? That's weird. Falcom's very strange about the way they manage the NPC table sometimes. I don't know why. Let's head to the police department. That's where we're supposed to be going. That's our uh, objective right now. We're supposed to get a rundown on how support requests work. All right, here we go. What's up, Franz? God, the CPD theme is so cool. Actually, let's ignore them for a hot second here. Uh, let's try going over here. Oh, it's Raymond and Donovan again. Hey, looks like you guys are already hard at work. Well, you may be police officers, but most of us don't think too kindly of you. Try not to pick any fights, okay? What's with all the hate, man? Well, the more hardcore guys in the force think of you as as discount bracers, so their pride is taking a severe blow. It doesn't matter if you live in your own detached office, most of the department considers you an eyesore. I could maybe rewrite this interaction a little bit. Donovan and Raymond are cool. Like, uh, he doesn't mind us. See, he's giving us, like, advice. Like, I don't want to bother you. But yeah, the rest of the department's like stupid special support section. 
so Fran told me you guys ended up staying in that weird new section. Pretty gutsy move, to be honest. Regardless, you're still my juniors. Feel free to ask me questions about anything you don't understand, and I'll try my hardest to answer. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm gonna drop that laugh. Oh yeah, then he hits on Ellie some more, and he's like, <laughs> You wanna go out for lunch? This guy doesn't have a care in the world, does he? So let me see, you wanna change that laugh? And I want to change section to division. It used to be that the, uh, like, the SSS is the special support section. You can't change that. But the other divisions of the CBD are called divisions. There's the first investigative division, the second investigative division, and the metropolitan division. I think that's it. If there are other divisions, they aren't named in this game. Uh, there's no one in the conference room, right? Maybe. Could be. Oh, there is. Yeah, it's Officer Kate. Whoa, is that you, Lloyd? Long time no see. Oh, Kate, it's good to see you again. The heck? Is she an acquaintance of yours or something? Yeah, she's one of my superiors that drop by the academy every once in a while. I learned a lot under Kate. Everything from firing a gun to regular classroom lessons. Lloyd was such a natural that I ended up having a ton of fun teaching him everything. It looks like the division you were assigned to is a bit unorthodox, Lloyd. I believe in you, though. Good luck out there. Don't lose hope, Lloyd. She says his name too much. I thought I fixed this. Or maybe I didn't. It's just on the build yet. Can't remember. Don't lose hope, Lloyd. I promise your hard work your hard work will pay off. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Now I'm even more worried. I think it's clear that the special support section is the outcast of the CPD. And you're just a nameless guy in the uh, in the Metropolitan Division. Let's see. Should I be on? Should I be tough on you, rookies? Oh, in case you didn't know, we're a part of the Metropolitan Division. Our main duty is to patrol the city. I hope we bump into each other again. Yeah, likewise. I'm looking forward to working with you. There's also an elevator here. <laughs> I forgot there was a cutscene on it. It's our favorite character. Oh, someone was using the elevator. It's Deputy Director Pierre. Damn. It's him. <laughs> What are you mutts doing in a place like this? This place has no use for outcasts like you. Yeah, that right? I can't deny the outcast part. But more importantly, I see that you didn't bother to heed my advice. Didn't I tell you to refuse your assignment to the special support section? It's a waste of CPD funding that was only established because of that damn Sergei. It's trash, meaningless, a rotten ship that will sink in half a year. I think I even had the kindness to warn you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, excuse me, Deputy Director. Weren't you in a hurry? <laughs> yes, I'm a busy man. I nearly forgot thanks to the lot of you. Listen, leave the hard work to the capable detectives and don't make a mess, got it? Just keep an eye on the citizens and make sure they stay happy. Don't go prowling where you don't belong. Now get back to that dump you call your office. Um, should we still take the elevator or no? I don't know if there's a nicer way to word this. I've got a feeling we aren't even recognized as police officers. It may be prudent of us to avoid going upstairs unless we have some special business to attend to. Yeah, you don't get to actually, uh, go upstairs. <laughs> Fun fact, that elevator does in fact work. You can clip your way into that room. And it functions, it has a menu and everything. It works. And there is a second floor, which we see in a cutscene later, but not now. Alright, let's talk to the receptionist. I was supposed to talk to Rebecca, but I interacted with Fran. Whoops. Oh my! Oh, Lloyd! Oh, that's right. We... Well, Sergei said her name, but she hasn't properly introduced herself yet. <laughs> Hello again. We saw the request on the terminal, so here we are. Great, I've been waiting for you guys. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Rebecca, the head receptionist of the CPD. And I'm Fran Seeker, also a receptionist of the CPD. I don't think I had the chance to properly introduce myself the other day. Yeah, I suppose you didn't. That day definitely wasn't one of our finest moments. What you mean to say is, we were scolded by the deputy director after we let a bracer steal all of our credit. Don't remind me. T.O. Oh, I'm sorry everyone. That's pretty unfortunate for your first day. Don't worry too much about it. 
The SSS was only established recently, so you're bound to run into your fair share of uncomfortable situations. If you all ever need a helping hand, don't hesitate to rely on us, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> your kind words have put the, this trembling heart at bay. We look forward to working with you. So, do you mind explaining the additional details regarding the support requests? Of course not. Let's get started. First of all, HQ has assigned a dedicated operator to support the SSS. That's our very own Fran right here. I'm looking forward to working with you, everyone. An operator? So Fran will be supporting us via our enigmas? Well, my specialty isn't really supporting you guys in the field. My main duty is to help report and process the completion of support requests. This will be done via the Orbital Network. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting real confused right about now. In other words, the SSS will be accepting a myriad of different requests from now on. And once we finish these requests, Fran will process our reports that we submit using her own terminal here at HQ. So then that means we don't have to come to headquarters every time we need to submit a report, is that right? Precisely. Once your reports are approved and processed within the system, we will send the proper compensation your way. Furthermore, when your DP accumulates beyond a certain threshold, your detective rank will also increase. Feel free to ask me about that later. Basically, these are all my new duties as the very first operator of the SSS. I see, that makes sense. So we can avoid all those irritating procedures by using the terminal down at the SSS building, yeah? Bingo. It's actually a part of the Orbital Network initiative in Crossbell. Tio, has the terminal at the SSS been installed and tested yet? Yes, it's good to go. Good to hear. Well then, please allow me to explain the additional details regarding your support request. If there's anything you don't understand, don't be afraid to speak up. Alright, time to get the rundown. Support requests are requests submitted by various individuals to the SSS. Support requests vary from person to person, ranging from simple assistance requests to formal investigations and monster exterminations. With the exception of a few special cases, you retain the right to decide whether you'll accept support requests or not. However, if you do accept them, make sure to complete them within the given deadline. As far as the current support requests go, you're able to accept and report them on the Special Support Sections Terminal. Once you confirm them, the details will also be recorded in your detective notebook. Please try to keep track of your request. Also, your terminal will, will automatically update each day with new support requests. We recommend that you make a habit of checking the terminal each morning. Whenever you complete a support request, please make sure you submit your report at your terminal. We'll be able to immediately process it via the Orbital Network. Based on the contents of the request, you'll be compensated with special rewards from time to time. Report your completed requests whenever you can. By completing investigations successfully and finishing support requests, your achievements within the CBD will be noted. Your accomplishments will be determined by the amount of detective points, DP, earned. Extra DP may be obtained, depending on your performance during missions and requests. When your DP reaches a certain threshold, you will be promoted. Currently, ranks are divided into 15 levels. You'll be rewarded with every rank promotion, so it's definitely worth the extra effort. Nothing else. Alright, I believe that should wrap up the explanation on su support requests. Um, when you return to the SSS, try pressing the report option on your terminal screen. I'll make sure to send more support requests your way as they come in. Got it. Thanks, you two. And that's it. That's your first support request. Alright, I believe that should wrap up the explanation on support requests. Well then, once you return to the SSS, try pressing the report option on your terminal screen. Cool. And let's go back to the SSS. I wonder if Sergei has unique dialogue for this exact moment. Uh, no, it's the same. So all we have to do is use this terminal and report our progress to headquarters, right? That is correct. Let's test it out. Check requests. Or no, not check. Report to HQ. There we go. See, there's Fran. Hello, you've reached the CPD. 
how can we help you today? This is so much more high tech than anything we saw in Liberal. Well then, allow me to check your reports. I guess that's not entirely true. The R cell had a similar system. It had like some sort of video monitor. Remember that one time Weissman like hacked it and called us on the R cell? Thanks for the reports, everyone. If you finish any more support requests, please let me know. That only took a moment to send our report. Talk about efficient. From here on out, I assume we'll be reporting finished su support requests in the same manner. Oh, another update? It appears that more requests have already been added to our system. We should verify each one just to be safe. You'll also see that uh, we got the, the background working now. Now it always looks good. And it's always legible. Alright, so we got one urgent. That means it's required. And a couple of new optional ones. Lost item search from Trant. I lost some items in the city. I'm looking for somebody to help me find them. For details, please see me at the Hotel Millennium in the Entertainment District. And... Uh, I'm waiting in my room. There's one more line to that. Vacancy verification from Crosswell City Hall. The city's residential affairs division is reviewing residence reg registrations. We are seeking assistance from the CPD in verifying vacant units. Uh... Please inquire at the Crossbell City Hall reception desk. She owned the receptionist. And a required one. From the government, a dangerous monster Megalobat has been sighted in Geofront's A1 sector. We ask that the special support section deal with this threat swiftly. Items of note, it uses the weight of its body to damage with high power attacks. Be alert. Phew, that's a lot. More monsters in the Geofront, huh? So this is an extermination request? From what I've heard, those are usually handled by the Bracer Guild. Hear me out, guys. Why don't we take care of this extermination ourselves? You want to? Looking for a bit of redemption, Lloyd? Yeah, I am. It was only because of Arius McLean that we came out unscathed yesterday. Uh, I should change that. That wasn't yesterday. That was actually two days ago. There was another line like this in the city that uh, complicated things where they said yesterday... Like, that was an NPC dialogue. I remember having that uh, fixed in my test run. Also, don't forget that we were taken by surprise. If we had time to prepare, I genuinely believe we could have handled it alone. Besides, today's our first official day on the job, so why not start off with a bang? You make a compelling argument. It seems unnecessary, but your logic is sound. I like the way you think, Lloyd. We better start repairing our already rocky image, you know? Now that we've got a plan, I guess we should head to the Geofront when we're ready. Yeah. Among the support requests, there are some that are higher priority and mandatory. These are marked as urgent, and when completed, the story will advance. Other support requests are not mandatory. Please pay attention to them, though. They have time limits and will expire if ignored. So they also, once you read them on the terminal, they go into your detective notebook, of course. So we got the lost item search. We're actually going to hold off on this one for a very specific reason. Before sitting down to do this today, I uh, actually edited lines of text in this quest. So we'll do that on the next build. We got vacancy verification and the A1 sector monster. Obviously, we'll do the required one last. Also, uh, not yet, but a little later in the day, um, there's a hidden re request at the Bracer Guild. It's the thing that Michelle mentioned about his uh, idea for a little test he wants to give you. So that was actually a allusion to a hidden uh, support request. Alright, sorry about that. Let's head to uh, City Hall. This is where we want to go. What's up, Shion? Welcome to Crossville City Hall. How may I help you? Please use our services to make payments or to submit an application for moving into or vacating the city. Excuse us, we're with the CPD. We're here in response to a support request submitted by City Hall. Oh, you're with the police? Wonderful, I wasn't expecting you to respond so quickly. Right, could you give us more details about the request, please? I believe it had to do with confirming vacancies of certain residences. Okay, let me fill you in on the details. You're all familiar with resident registrations, correct? Anyone wishing to move into Crossbell must come here to register for residency. The reality is, people will freely move in and out of the city without going through the appropriate avenues. It's become more and more difficult for us to keep track of it all. I see. 
Therefore, we're seeking your help to verify any vacant residences in the city. We need to rectify our documents that have any mislabeled vacancies. The folks over at the Residential Affairs Division have their hands full, so we gladly appreciate the assistance. You're telling us that we have to play errand boys for the government? That's awfully rude of you, Randy. Oh god, one of these text boxes is going to be four lines, isn't it? Verifying residential... There it is. <laughs> Verifying residential vacancies is actually important for catching certain criminal activities. Having the documentation completed in a punctual in a punctual manner is critical. I wonder if this was supposed to be two text boxes and it became one. That happens sometimes. We've actually gone through great uh, measures to fix that recently. And it's been one of the final technical hurdles of uh, getting the game released. That's more of a problem, not with... Probably not with things like this. I don't imagine this quest is voice acted with the Evo voice lines. But uh, in adding the Evo uh, voice acting, it actually has caused some problems where if the game had too many text boxes or too few, it would create mismatches. So we've actually been going through like a lengthy process of fixing that. Some of it was our own fault, uh, like in the original editing pass. Sometimes things that used to be one text box became two or things that used to be two became one. So that's a no-no in voice scenes. Uh, some of it was actually the original translation's fault in the leak that actually happened sometimes. We'd find that in the uh, original translation where the text box numbers wouldn't match up and therefore the editing wouldn't match up and it would create problems. So hopefully by the time 1.0 is out, fingers crossed, uh, there shouldn't be any problems with matching the, uh, the voice acting to uh, with the Evo voice mod. If you play with the Evo voice mod and uh, you notice anything weird, for example, uh, the hardest thing to find is when there are too many text boxes. Say, say one box becomes two. Uh, when that happens, then uh, the second text box just won't be voiced because why would there be a voice line for a text box that used to not exist? There wouldn't be. So if you ever see that happen with the Evo voice mod, tell us, tell someone in the Geofront, contact someone. We'll, we have to go in and fix those. Those are really hard to find. The opposite was, has been easier to find. We developed a method to find instances when we had too few voice, or uh, too few text boxes in a blurb, and there was more voice lines than there were text boxes. That would create bugs. So uh, recently we went through and fixed all of that. I had to do it myself. I didn't find them, but I had to be the one to do the actual spreadsheet work to fix it. Interesting. Would it have me fooled? I don't think we'll be doing more than walking through the city, so it shouldn't be a problem. Will you be able to help us, to help us then? You actually get a unique text if you decline. You can always accept later, but this is something that, uh, if you really want to, like, do, like, an informal test of the game, if you wanted to, you could, like, test for weird, unique di lines of dialogue like that where you, uh, decline requests and then accept them later. I think it also, uh, gets noted in your notebook. Alright, so we got the vacancy list. Let's see, there are three different locations in total. There's one near the entrance of Residential Street. Looks like the next one's on East Street. Huh, according to this address, it's to the right of the Bracer Guild. To the right of the Bracer Guild? Sweet, that'll be easy to remember. Didn't we go to the right of the Bracer Guild earlier? Last one looks like it's in the downtown district. Uh, that shouldn't be a question. It's an apartment complex known as Otis Heights. There appear to be three documented vacancies. Yeah, Falcom didn't write uh, unique text in the event that you've already been to those locations. Oh well. Just a moment, please. I'll note this down in the detective notebook. <laughs> scribble, scribble. Okay, all done. Thanks for taking care of that, Ellie. We'll begin working on verifying the outline vacancies now. We just have to report back to you once we've completed the task, right? Yes, please report back to me once you've completed verifying all three locations. I'll leave everything in your capable hands. So let's check the detective notebook again. And look at this one. Oh, interesting. So, hmm. At the top of these uh, tabs, like exploring the Geofront and support quests, these are your like main story beats. It's not like a... It's not like your other tabs, like these are your support request tabs, the like bluish and pinkish ones, purple, lavender, whatever. Uh, those are for support requests, but the top orange tabs are like story beats. 
It's just a summary of what the special support section is doing in the story. So at the top of those, like you'll see that it's noted as Officer Lloyd Bannings. So like a fun question we've had is like, who writes the detective notebook? I made the case that Ellie writes it and we just saw her do it in this scene where she seems to handle like the actual job of uh, writing in the detective notebook, even though they should all have detective notebooks. It's kind of weird, but that's like a gimmick that they pull consistently throughout the Crossbell arc. Anytime like something needs to be written down in the notebook, like in the scene, it always seems to be uh, Ellie's responsibility. She's usually the one handling all of the like logistical matters for the SSS. Also, uh, oh darn it, it didn't write it for this request. Some of them have this though, where uh, if you intentionally um, turn down a request at first and then come back later, I've noticed that some of them have unique stars where it's like, uh, we decided to come back later or something. I noticed that because I've been uh, recently proofreading the complete detective notebook for any mistakes. Let's see, so we got three places to go. We got uh, Residential Street, East Street, and Downtown District. The place we want to go on Residential Street is the mansion. The abandoned looking one right here at the top of the district. So we'll pick up here next time and we'll start knocking out these support requests. We'll do the vacancy one, then we'll help Trot find his lost stuff. And uh, then we'll go slay the monster in the Geofront. There's some, there are a couple of interesting things to see at the Geofront that uh, we haven't seen yet, actually. We'll take care of that next time. All right, see you guys next week.